the science guy. internal energy. Imagine each person here being an atom and their arms being bonds. The more the arms move around, the higher the internal energy. Enthalpy. When one atom pushes on another atom, flow work is produced. So we defined these formulas earlier. Now, through a little bit of calculus magic, we can arrive at this formula. This formula tells us that enthalpy, H, is dependent on CP and temperature. Now, heat capacity, or CP, is a material property, whereas temperature, T, is a state property. This means enthalpy is dependent on both what you have and where it is. For that reason, absolute enthalpy really doesn't mean a whole lot, because where do you have it at? Huh? huh? Does that even mean anything? Therefore, we use relative enthalpy in almost everything we use relative to some reference state that we standardize. For example, room temperature. What's the enthalpy of this telephone, you might ask? It's whatever we define it to be. How about zero? So, I know you guys have seen a lot of these things. You've seen um, ice melt in the morning or later on in the afternoon off of a car. You've seen wood burning on a stove or a fireplace. But how do we know enthalpy is changing? We, we really see uh, this temperature change, but how do we relate that to enthalpy? Well, as we can see here, enthalpy can be described as a change in heat and the change in flow work. But at constant pressure, which is what we experience every day in the real world, this term goes away, and the change in enthalpy becomes a change in heat. So we're really directly relating the two. But how do we know enthalpy is changing? So as Nick just explained, enthalpy is most easily experienced on a day-to-day -day basis when there's a heat or temperature change at constant pressure. So in the following examples, we're going to see this. So with temperature change, it's obvious. T is either going up or down. There's a flow of heat either inside or outside of some arbitrary system. So there's going to be changes in enthalpy. Phase changes. So it takes energy to change the phase of an object. So when you have a glass of water and you have ice in the water, and heat from the surroundings is trying to heat up the water and you're trying to keep your water cool, the ice is melting based on absorbing the heat from the liquid and the heat of fusion, which is the amount of energy that this ice is absorbing, is what causes the ice to turn from solid state to a liquid state. So that represents the enthalpy changes of the ice into the liquid state. For formation, you're going to see heat of formation more so in chemical, uh, chemical reactions or on the molecular basis. So heat of formation relates more to the amount of energy that is stored in a bond or that is released when a bond is broken on the molecular basis. And then finally for reactions, such as combustion, you have the breaking of bonds, you have this in action. So you have the breaking of bonds. So say when you're, you have wood in a fireplace, the wood is being heated with an oxygen source and the bonds are being broken and releasing the carbon dioxide and water and the action. Got myself a uh, lounge in here and uh, got on. my feet up. Come on. And, uh... 